Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Amen. Please keep standing. Let's exercise our faith this morning. This is what? This is August, right? Can you, if you don't have a goal for the second quarter, can you set three goals for the second quarter? And this is what I want you to do. Every day, give thanks to God for the fulfillment of those goals. And this is how you give thanks to God. Because it's what I thank you, but it's difficult to be thankful for all that's not happened. So it's to say, take a moment, see yourself in the goal, and from that place, thank God. If you do it in the morning and you're able to keep it for the remaining part of the year, most of you will notice that your goal will happen. The most difficult things about making a goal happen is that the goals are not there in the first place. Why are the goals not there in the first place? People are tired of setting goals because the goals never come to pass. And they don't want to be depressed. The goals you set must be goals you are in control of. So don't say something like, I'll be married by October 31st. You are not in control of that goal. That goal is dependent on somebody else. When I say dependent, vitally dependent. All goals have parties. So if you say, I'm going to make $10,000, that goal depends on you. Praise God. When it comes to prayer, there are principles. When it, God, I always say this, God is not a magician. God is a miracle worker. What's the difference? In magician is, you don't understand what's happening. Miracles happen based on spiritual principles. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we honor you. We well, thank you because you're kind. We well, thank you because you're faithful. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please, you can have your seats. All of you online, welcome. All of you online, type your name. Let me know where you're joining us from. In the physical center, let me know where you're joining us from. Okay, so we're going to go into the Word of God today. I have some announcements. Um, the first thing is our men's, you know, do you have the DB? Did they show the DB? We've not done it. Can, do they have the DB? Because you're looking back, uh, they have it. Okay, so our men's, not all the men, just the Harvest's lucky men, we're having um, seven days of very intensive prayer. And um, what, what's the team again? Transformed. Yeah, that's it. So all the men, it's married men. So I'm telling them because all the women, you have to get on your husband's case. Amen? Yeah, you have to get on your husband's case. So seven days of transformed. So what will happen in those seven days is that all the men will be given. You will sign up. So um, I don't know if they have the signed up numbers here. That's a, okay, Brani, you need to help me get up and go and fix that. We need a sign up number and a place, an email you know, where you can sign up. So seven days, you'll get, you get a seven-day devotional. The second thing is this. There'll be um, daily prayers. You know, so every evening, all the men are praying for those seven days. And the last thing is this. You'll fast once in a week. So all the men. And I'm believing transform because that's the first step to a miracle. So all the men, I wanted to, you know, our past, Pastor Femi George has really worked really very hard on this. And all of the men are just really, you know, cheering up to do that and the men this is a good time because we've gotten a lot of men that are very successful in our church to begin to mentor those that are just upcoming so we have a lot of men that are billionaires and all of those kind of things and they're going to mentor the younger married men and just help them along the way which i think a church should do in addition to the prayers amen, amen. so if your husband is not part of this you need to get and say honey and if your husband is at home you're watching at home you need to say honey you need to be part of this amen glory to god the second thing is um yeah, I just want to say, um, twice in a year we we'll fast as a church for, it's a prolonged fast. It's the, um, so the first one is in January where we kind of pray and really believe God for the, for the rest of the year. And the second part of the year will be in September. So please take note, 21 days of intervention. 21 days of what? Intervention. Uh, Pastor Foluke, I love that. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. If your neighbor is not clapping, clap into their face. Clap into their face. Yeah, yeah. 
Those online clap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 21 days of intervention. It's 21 days of fasting and prayer. So in September, we'll not be doing three days. It's 21 days. Why do we put it in September? So that whatever has not happened till now, we'll use the prophetic push to push it there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you know our church, we believe in answer prayers and we see answer prayers. Praise God. So, so that's why we believe that. The other thing is, um, and this is the last announcement in addition to the fact that next week is um, prayer, 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 prayer service. When I say prayer service, meet and, meet and pray, greet and pray. If you have someone that has need that needs prayer, next week we'll be holding people's hands and praying with them in between the worship. But the last one is this. When we start the fasting and prayer in September, um, throughout the month of September, the first service will be different. It's going to be a prophetic service. We want to dedicate the first service to minister to people that have urgent need. There will be teaching of the word of God, but there will be intensive prayer and ministering to people. So, you know, some of your friends attend NLP, they say, that, can I get someone to pray for me? First service will be their best bet to come. All the first service in September. So just giving you a heads up about all that is happening. Glory to God. All right, let's get into the word of God today. Are you ready? We had an amazing first service. 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 All right, John chapter 4 in verse 14. We had an amazing first service. So if you have the number for the men to participate, you know, I wanted to put it quickly so that we can do that. John chapter 4 in verse 13. So this morning, um, hold on just one minute. The water is inside? Do you have the water? We need the water to Okay, just a minute. John chapter 4 in verse 14. The Bible says this in John chapter 4 in verse 14. What does the Bible say? So we're talking about the Holy Spirit in all of this series. We're talking about the Holy Spirit in all of this series. So if you've missed it, you need to go back and just kind of listen to it. And John chapter 4 verse 14, it, we, we had a powerful service at the first service. I, um, they were telling me that from South Africa... One guy said he was crying, fell off the, off the chain. So that, I mean, just like watching on the screen, it was powerful. Right in the auditorium here, the power of God was so real, you know, in the first service. All right. So, John chapter 4, verse, verse 14. There are two dimensions of the Holy Spirit. So, there is what the Holy Spirit does within us. And there's what the Holy Ghost does what, through us. Why is this important? The reason why this is important is this. The more you know about the Holy Spirit, the more the Holy Spirit can what? Express himself. The less you know about the Holy Spirit, the less the Holy Spirit can what? Express himself. So there are two dimensions to the Holy Ghost. Because some people say, well, I speak in tongues. Listen, speaking in tongues, you can equate speaking in tongues to the Holy Spirit. Like, it's, it's, it's a big thing, but in the scale of what the Holy Spirit is doing, that's so small. So, John chapter 4 in verse, so let's read John chapter 4 verse 19. This is what Jesus Christ said. Jesus Christ said this, he said in verse 14 rather, John 4 14, Whosoever drinketh of this water, now we've told you that water is a symbol of the Spirit, that I shall give him shall never thirst again. But the water I give him shall be in him, what? A well of water springing into everlasting life. Now, if you've not followed the teaching up till now, I would advise you to go to YouTube and watch the Holy Spirit and fire, the Holy Spirit and wind, and you know, it's a subsequent teaching. Because one of the things we said was that God intentionally used some symbols to describe the Holy Spirit because of certain characters. Because of what? Certain characters. So, what are all the symbols of the Holy Spirit? Now, look at what he said. He now said, he now said this. He said, water is a symbol, but water has a well. Mm. Because water was used three times for the Holy Spirit in three is one what symbol, but it was used as a well, it was used as a river, and used as what? I taught this before. Used as what? Rain. So why the different use? God is trying to show something. When God says, it shall be in you a well, do you notice most of the time, a well is for a small use? 
it, most of most houses have one well but most houses have one well because it's just it's just a it's just a well it will serve just a house that's all it will serve it will serve just a house that's all it will serve you just have one well but look at another place john chapter 7 john chapter 7 verse 38 John chapter 7 verse 38. The Bible says this. So, in the first teaching, the Holy Spirit is what? A well. Right. Well is for what? A small use. Okay. Look at what it says here. And he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow what? No, you can't speak louder than that. Flow what? River. Take note now. So, the, so, have you noticed who has river, river for a personal use? No. River is always for what? A communal use. The Holy Spirit said there are two dimensions to my ministry. That's what I do in you, like a well for you, for your family, just a private thing. But there's also what I do through you, which is like a, a river. Hallelujah. So when we talk about the Holy Spirit, there's a well dimension. It's just like a private house use. And that's what it does within us. But it's a river dimension. Oh, this is good. So, what, what does the Holy Spirit? What does the Holy Spirit do within us? Just, I mean, I can't go through all of the teaching I've taught before. You have to go back to listen to it. One of the things the Holy Spirit does within us is the Holy Spirit transport to us the presence of God. So, for example, some people say Jesus is here. Literally, that's wrong. Jesus is not here in person. Jesus is in heaven. Where is here? Jesus is here in the person of the Holy Spirit. How does the Holy Spirit transport us? Once we get born again, the Holy Spirit stays in us. And by staying in us, it connects us to God's presence. Some say, what does that mean? When you know the Holy Spirit is with you, the first thing it gives you is assurance. So, David said it this way. David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. The reason why I fear no evil is why? Because you are what? with me assurance this is good <laughs> assurance is powerful because assurance leads to confidence so you you know you go to the hospital doctor says mm, 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 this thing i see hey it might be cancer your friend in the hospital say hey you're finished you say calm down how can i be finished i have the holy ghost why because the holy spirit brings what assurance you're applying for a contract there are big names of the contract and those that are not the high and the mighty and it says how do you know you will get it i have what the holy ghost why how can you beat me with the holy ghost the holy ghost gives assurance someone says wow you're 30 now we'll marry you say don't worry about that i have the holy ghost don't worry about that what do i have i have the holy ghost don't worry about that. What do I have? I have the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Spirit brings assurance to you. Let me give a big testimony. And many of you in Nigeria, many of us in Nigeria may not relate with this, all of you online. One of our church members was kidnapped some years ago. And as they kidnapped him, of course, he's been taught the word. As he entered the car and that prayed something, he slept off, woke up, he found himself on the way to another state. He was just trying to take a 10 minutes drive. He was in another state. And he recognized it because he had driven by his pastor landmark. And he just said, he began to pray. He said, they can't kidnap me and the Holy Ghost. If someone was kidnapped, it's me that will kidnap all of them. He began to pray. When he began to pray, he, you know, because of this, he saw the knife. and they, they told him, if you talk, we'll remove your head. We'll sever your head from your body. He said, he, he said okay. So he was shaking, but he was praying just, just under his breath. And he was praying in tongues and praying in tongues. But some of our praying in tongues, are, as you pray in tongues, you become bolder. Hallelujah. You become what? Bolder. So after some time from... By that time, he had become uncontrollable. You know what happened? The tire of the car just excluded poor. Then they had to park to feel it. Then, as they parked, a police vehicle just came there. All of them just took off. You know what it said? It said, The police vehicle did not even wait or get down. And they took off. He got down from the vehicle and just went his own way. See, assurance. They said, Everybody's dying, not me. Assurance. Listen, we look the same, but we don't carry the same thing. 
Oh my God. Listen, you can go ahead and name your child Bill Gates, but we know the real Bill Gates. Is that not true? We can look the same. We can have the same name. But who we are is different. We look the same, but we carry something big. We have the Holy Ghost. And that's confidence. You know why confidence is important? Because sometimes you see a businessman. He's done so well, been doing 100,000 yearly, 200,000 yearly. Now, to move to $500,000 yearly or to move to $1 million yearly, it's such a big step. So, he finds himself being pulled back. He finds himself being sucked back. Hey, why can't you take the step? He's just afraid. Most of you that think, you say, how far will you go? I'm working on it. The reason why you're procrastinating because of fear. That's why you can't start the shop. That's why you can't start the branch. That's why you can't do the other thing. Because you're really afraid you can't take the decision. The reason why you can't fall in love because of fear. Oh, what does the Holy Ghost do? When the Holy Ghost comes into your life, this is what it does. Because it gives you assurance, that which you are afraid of, you are able to take a big step. And people wonder, how come you can do that? Because I have assurance. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Assurance. It's really big. So, that's what the Holy Ghost does in us. Makes us bold. Gives us confidence. Acts chapter 1. What does he do through us? This one is big. Hey, hey. Are you ready? Ha, <laughs> ha. He says, but you should receive power. The word power there is dy- dynamis. That's where we get the English word dynamite from. You know the way dynamite is? You know, if you, re- if you detonate it, it's going to explode. So, someone says, how can I have power? Because that power is passive once you detonate it. He said, well, you should receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So, why does the Holy Ghost come upon you? Look at the next line. And you shall be what? And you shall be what? Oh my God. Do you know what the, do you know what the meaning of witness is? The dictionary said, a weakness is a person that can produce proof. He says, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you become the person that can produce proof that God can do something significant, that God can answer prayer. What does that mean? The Holy Ghost turns you to a proof producer. People are wondering if God can answer prayer. He says, when you receive the Holy Ghost, there's no need to look around again. You become the proof that God can do something. The reason why is that because in your life, you become what? A proof producer. Hey, 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 hey. I didn't say so. The Bible said so. We've received the Holy Ghost too. In Coloma, Coloma. Oh, I felt something. Ah! He said the, he said the Holy Ghost will make you a proof producer. That means people will not be asking why is your God. There will be evidence in your business that God answers prayers. Oh, come on, nah, 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 nah. Can I declare over you this morning? Your life will be filled with characters of extraordinary and undeniable proofs of God's presence and answered prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ, people will look around and say, You're still believing God. Say amen, somebody. Let me. Get... I can imagine when Moses got to Egypt. When Moses got to Egypt, Pharaoh knew him because he grew up in Egypt. Moses said, the God of Israel sent me. <laughs> Pharaoh said, <laughs> you, the God of Israel sent me. Boy, he didn't know that the Holy Spirit had come upon Moses. That Moses was, had now become what? A proof producer. He said, he, so Pharaoh said to Moses, he said, excuse me, who is the God of Israel? You know what Moses said? Moses said, we don't talk. See, Mata, yeah. he threw down his rod. Hey, Pharaoh said, Mose, hey, Mo, you don't do magic. Because they knew Moses when he grew up. He wasn't that kind of person. He was timid. He didn't have supernatural influence. They knew him that in his business, every year was a 20 million and I'm not turnover. But all of a sudden, he's 200 million from 20 million. They said, what? They knew him. All of us had PCOS. All of us had children that were autistic. All of us could not get that document. But how did you get your own? Moses said, proof producing. I've met someone. He said, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, what will he do? He will turn you 
So you pray for this. You know why I'm telling you this? Because many of you that say you have the Holy Ghost, I don't know if you have the Holy Ghost or not. When I see your proofs, I will know if you have the Holy Ghost or not. Are you here? Oh, this is good. Oh, this is good. You produce proof. Hmm. This is what I will say to you. Don't, this is one of the weakest, biggest things you can do to hurt yourself. Don't limit the ability of the Holy Spirit in the inside of you. Don't limit it. Second Samuel chapter 22 verse 13. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> See what David said. I said the ability of the Holy Spirit. David said, many of you think I'm a strong man. He said, no. He says, through you. Second Samuel chapter 22 verse 30. Second Samuel chapter 22 verse 30. He said, through you. I have run by a troop. See what I say? He said, by thee, I run through a troop. He said, there was an army before me. By thee, I defeated all of them. He said, through thee, I leaped over a war. Someone says, but I don't have to run through a troop. But you have a wall in your business. It's a financial war. But you have a wall in your something. It's a policy war. David said, by your spirit, as a proof for you that I just jumped over. <laughs> by, yeah, 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 yeah. by your spirit, I just jumped over. He said, nothing grows in Nigeria, not for me. Why? Through thee, I leap over a wall. So he said, in this business, everybody stop, not me. Through thee, I leap over the wall. How? The presence of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. The ability of the Holy Ghost. So people were like, how do you have this result? By the Spirit. So someone asked a question, can I get the water? The bottle of water, yeah? Is the kitty here? Is it? Okay. Thank you. So someone said, okay, yeah, yeah. We're talking a lot about the Holy Spirit. But I thought you said last week that I have him. Why are you saying I must receive him again? So, so bring, bring, bring that great guy. Just bring him. You, don't, you, just, you don't have to come with him. Just come, my brother. You have to help me with your imagination. I didn't get this illustration. You have to help me. When you go born again, the Spirit of God comes into you. Yes or no? How are you? Drink. As much as he wants. That's all. Thank you. So when we come into Christ, the Holy Spirit comes inside us. What he drank, where is it? Can you see him? No. The fact that you can't see me does not mean the Spirit is not in me. The fact that you can't see him does not mean the spirit is not in me because that's the problem but it's in me so at salvation the spirit is in you at the infilling of the holy ghost it's not just in you it takes you over and the best way is this just because of some things just imagine i feel this bad top here can I have a better camera shot on this backdrop, please? Thank you. I feel from the side, from the side. Yeah, thank, thank you. I feel this bathtub here with water. The water is already inside. Can you go into the bathtub? Just lie on it. In the first experience, in the first experience, this is the first experience. He drinks the water. In the second experience, we take him. Just imagine this bathtub is full of water. We take him and immerse him in the water. When you get born again, the Holy Ghost comes into you. When you receive the infilling, you are immersed in the Holy Ghost. If there was water in this right now, by the time he comes out, Nobody will tell you what is on him because it will be drenched, it will be drenched head to toe. Listen to me. 
I know you have the Holy Ghost, but it's time to what? To be immersed in the Holy Spirit. It's time to be what? Immersed. So it's one thing to live inside you. It's another thing where you are totally immersed in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, my brother. I can release you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Glory to God. So at the new birth, I receive the Holy Spirit at the infilling. So the infilling is like an activation. That's what it is. Let me put it another way. So let me put it another way. There's a SIM card I have just here. There's a SIM card I have here. I hope I brought it. Yeah. There's a SIM card I have here. When you put the SIM in the phone, you have to activate it. Although the SIM is in the phone, you can use the services of the SIM. Is that not true? Although there's a SIM card. If the SIM is in the phone, you still cannot use the services of the SIM card onto what? The SIM card is activated. When you got born again, the Spirit was put on the inside of you. Once you, are, once you have that infilling, all of the services are available because what? You are not activated. Glory to God. I say hallelujah. Someone says how are you activated? You activated two ways. Either by teaching, teaching the word of God, or by the laying of hands. Teaching about laying of hands. And we're going to read something quickly in um, Acts chapter 19. Oh, glory to God. So some, people, some, some questions say, okay, if I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, must I speak in tongues? You know, what, must everybody speak in tongues? Good. The reason why I believe we must speak in tongues is this. In the Bible, everyone that received the Holy Ghost spoke in tongues. So why do you want to be an exception? If everyone that is in school have my chick number, how can you be a student that have my chick number? There must be something that shows you have received the Holy Ghost. There must be something that shows you have what? Received the Holy Ghost. Oh, so let's read Acts chapter 19. Let's watch this now. Of course, we know on the day of Pentecost they spoke in tongues. Acts chapter 19, verse 1. And it came to pass, verse 2. Let me just jump to verse 2. And verse 2, look at what Paul said. Paul said unto them, Have you what? He said, Have you received the Holy Spirit? Take note of what he says. He didn't say, have you asked for the Holy Spirit? Because, because that's a different paradigm. You must know in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit is given. So today, we are not asking him to give us the Holy Spirit. We are receiving what is what? Given. Once I've sent money to your account, you can't ask me that, please send it again. No. The question will be like, I have not received it. How do I receive what you have, what? What you have sent? So the reason why Paul says, have you received the Holy Ghost was this. The Holy Ghost has already been what? Poured out. So many of us say, Father, please give me the Holy Ghost. Please help me speak in thoughts. God is saying that I'm not your problem. The Holy Ghost has been given. All you have to do now is to what? Receive. See what Paul said. Paul said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And he said unto him, we have not even heard whether there will be any Holy Ghost. He was shocked because they look like Christians. And he said unto him, unto what, you, unto what were you baptized? Said, oh, we were baptized the baptism of John. Oh, Paul says, you are not even born again because you are followers of John. So the next thing they did that, and, and, and in verse 4, Paul explained the whole concept to them. Verse 5, and when he preached to them, the Bible says the first thing that happened, and when they heard it, they were baptized in the name of, Jesus, of the Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean? The first thing that happened was that they got born again and they got what? Baptized. But after baptized, he said something else. And when they had gotten baptized, Paul laid hands on them and said, and the Holy Ghost what came upon them, and they what spoke with tongues and what prophesied. Act two, they spoke in tongues. Act nineteen, they spoke in tongues. Act ten, let's look at Act ten. <laughs> Act ten, verse forty-four. And while while while. <laughs> And what Peter, why yet speak these words? The Holy Ghost fell on him that heard the word. The Bible says in verse 46, verse 46, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Did you see that again? The Bible says that in Act 10, they heard them speak in tongues. In Act 19, they spoke in tongues. In Act 2, they spoke in tongues. How come it's when you want to receive the Holy Ghost that we not speak in tongues? Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. The first question people ask is this. Um, someone says, um, so when it comes to speaking in tongues, this is my problem. There's this girl that sleeps around in my office. 
she will sleep with everyone in the office. Next team, during office fellowship, he will just hear, Mara, ma, 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 ma. I'm like, Jesus. This girl. He said, there's this man. And you have, and they'll be speaking in tongues. <laughs> Please, I, I, see, I don't speak in tongues, but I'm better than them. See how you're judging your Christianity. Question. I wanted to show you something. Same act of the 10, verse 45. I want to show you something. Because what you're saying that, can someone be speaking in tongues and believing in sin? And many of you, that's why you feel you're not qualified. You feel as if I'm not holy enough. <laughs> you say, ah, oh, pastor, I'm not holy enough for the Holy Ghost. I'm not, how can I receive the Holy Ghost? I know myself. See what Paul said, Acts chapter 10, verse 45. <laughs> Same chapter we read. And day of circumcision, of circums- we believed. They were astonished. Why were they astonished? Because Paul was preaching to these unbelievers. Maybe one of them was a fornicator. He was preaching to them. Before Paul could even finish talking, he just heard them speaking in tongues. Ha! Huh? The, the saints said, hey! Ha! Huh? Hey! They were shocked. See what the Bible says. The Bible says this. This is amazing. And they of circumcision will believe, were astonished. For as, as many as came with Peter, because what? Because on the what? On the Gentiles, another word is unbelievers, Act 10 verse 45. On the Gentiles also poured out what? No, say it out. So when people that are not very spiritual speak in tongues, I know you feel as if they should not be speaking in tongues. But the problem is this. It's a gift. It's not based on maturity. You don't measure someone's spirituality by how they speak in tongues. Because it's a gift. What do you measure spirituality on? You measure spirituality on the fruits. I'll give an example. Let me give two guys. Let me, two young guys. Let me just say two young, two young guys. You know, uh, I'm looking for young people, you know, but others are here. I can, okay, maybe the two of you, the two of you are young, yeah. Yeah. Two young guys. So this, these two are very handsome. Watch this now. This guy is, of course, he looks young. He drives a Ferrari. This guy drives a brown new Land Cruiser 2020. So they are asking a girl out. I don't know what girl they are asking out. Any, I can get someone from the choir. This lady over here, will you come? I, I will speak here. You come here. Yeah. No, no, no. Let, let the other lady come. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. I wanted something that, that can fit, something like that. So this lady over here, the two of them are asking him out. Guess what? This one is driving. If they are both born again, they are both everything. This one drives a Ferrari. This one drives a Land Cruiser 2020. If you meant to choose based on money, I know that's not who you are. I know. If you meant to choose a money, you will choose the Ferrari, right? Huh? Okay. Because you will choose a Ferrari guy because the Ferrari guy looks richer. But if I told you that, oh, that guy, his father gave him Ferrari because the guy's, the guy's father is the richest person in the whole of Ghana and gave him the Ferrari. But this guy's a businessman and he bought the Land Cruiser by himself. Will it change the way you think about it? Because all of a sudden you're like, oh, this guy may not be responsible. All he has is a gift. But this guy is different because he has fruits. Hallelujah. He has what? Fruits. The problem is this, most of us are judging maturity by fruits and not gifts. Most of us are judging maturity by gifts, not fruits. So, when I see this guy's Ferrari, I really thank God for him, but I don't really have a special regard. Because his car doesn't display his intelligence, his experience or anything, because it's what? A gift. But when I see this guy's car, I'm like, oh wow, you've done so well for yourself. I can't tell him that because indeed for himself. I think you've done so well for yourself because you must have worked at build a strong business to do that. So the thing is this when you see people speaking in tongues, don't think because they're speaking that they're very spiritual. No, because it's a gift. So I said, So how do I know people that are spiritual? The same way we have the gifts of the spirit, we have something else called what? The fruits of the spirit. The fruit is what they, comes out of their life. Glory to God. Thank you. God bless you. Help me with the time. I've lost, I've lost consciousness of the time. I don't know if the time is right. Oh, wow. The last thing is this. Someone says, <laughs> and Patricia, this is for you. I saw you somewhere. Yeah, Patricia, this is your question. You know. It says, 
how come I've not received the Holy Spirit? Why, why is it so hard? You know, I hear what they speak in tongues and <laughs> what they speak in tongues. You know, it's very intimidating when you go for a Christian setting. Like, Hurama, kurama, and there's assumption everybody speaking in tongues and like, yes, it's release. And you're like, and they think you're warming up. <laughs> there's, there's nothing coming. <laughs> you, how many of you been there before? Oh, I, I've been there. I was, I've been there. <laughs> All my friends were speaking in tongues. I was the last. In fact, one day I said, God, what did I do? <laughs> why is it so hard for people to speak in tongues and receive the Holy Spirit? The reason why is this. Mindset. Do you, do you remember the story of Naaman? Naaman said, I thought Elisha would come out Touch me and I'll be healed. How can I tell him to go and wash in the Jordan? The reason, because not that what Elisha told him to do was difficult. It was just what? Different. And because it was different, it was very difficult for him to do it. The reason why it's difficult to the Holy Spirit is that it's different from the way they've always thought about it. It's a very different game. Let me give you some difference. Number one. People have thought that the Holy Spirit is based on my good works. So when I say the Holy Spirit, all the bad things you do just come up in your mind. You say, I can't receive. Ah, ah I know me now. <laughs> I know me. I know what this matter has done. <laughs> this man will not speak in tongues. Then the second thing is this. I was taught that if you want to receive the Holy Ghost, you have to beg God. It's what at that time in the early Christianity in Nigeria, it's called the Tari doctrine. What's Tari? You have to pray for a long time and fast and pray and fast to receive the Holy Ghost. Listen, you don't have to ask for the Holy Ghost because it's already given. All you have to do now is what? Receive. How do you ask for what is given? So, because if you think you're asking, once you don't receive, you think God did not give me. No. Once you know it's given and you don't receive, there's something wrong with my receiving. And the third thing is this. The reason, the reason why some people don't receive the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues is this. Everyone, look up here. This is the major reason why a lot of people don't receive the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. Because speaking in tongues takes a higher level of surrender than other things. What do you have to surrender? Your mouth. And so, like, speak. <laughs> you know, I you see that, at least if I know the first syllables, I will syllable like, Kuma, ha, Kuma, ha, Kuma, Kuma. See, it's, 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 so this is what people want. Let me tell you what people want. Instead of people to surrender themselves to the Holy Spirit, people want the Holy Spirit to control their tongue. So, you will hear people say, so, open your mouth now, speak in tongues. So, just like, ah! Because what they think is that the Holy Ghost will just take my tongue, hijack it. It will hijack it and just say, could it come Could it come ka, ka, ka. A, B, C, D, E, F, J, I, J, K. You know, just, just hijack it. No. Listen to me. Demons are the ones that seek for control. Holy Spirit seeks for surrender. Oh, wow. They got it on this side. Demons seek for what? Control. The Spirit of God seeks for what? Surrender. What will of surrender? If a police arrest you, hands up! Surrender. That means let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Move to the left. I surrender. That's surrender. Control is forcing me, holding me, moving me around. That's control. Holy Spirit said, I will not take your tongue and speak for you. Because most of you think the Holy Spirit will speak for you. No. If the Holy Spirit is speaking for you, that means the Holy Spirit is not speaking in tongues. No, sir. What the Holy Spirit will give you, give you a nudge. So you just see, as we're praying, receive the Holy Spirit. And you feel a word want to come out. And you say, thank you, Lord. And I know you can feel nervous. And you I said, and your mind will say, that's crazy. You're stupid. <laughs> You're faking it. <laughs> you know that this is not coming. And all of a sudden, instead of you to say, instead of you to keep surrendering, you say, he listens to that voice. I said, that's true. How can someone speak in tongue? I've never heard Pastor B say that kind of tongue before. That's a silly tongue. What kind of language is that? I'm even sure I'm cursing God right now. So, you know what? All of a sudden, you begin to control yourself. Instead of what? 
surrendering. Mothers know this. When you are in labor, what do you do? You surrender to the pain. That's what you do. When the intensity is coming, when the pain is coming, you align with the pain and push. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Someone says, how do I receive the Holy Ghost? Number one, it's for Christians. If you're not born again, it's not for you. Because the Bible says the spirit of truth is for Christians. Number two, believe he will give it to you. Let me, let me read something to you. Luke chapter 11 verse 13. This was even before the Holy Ghost was given, before just Christ died. Luke 11 13. Luke 11 13. See what the Bible says. Luke 11 13. This is good. How many of you here do not speak in tongues? You've not been activated yet. Raise up your hand. Let me see you. You've not been activated. Wow. So just not a lot of people. I'm so proud of all of you. See what it says. It says, let's read together. One to go. Let's one to go. If you've been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall what? Do what? To who? At this time, the Holy Ghost was not even given. Just kind of saying, just ask. Take it. Someone said, maybe, maybe not. Mm, God says, see the mind of God. God says, forget it. It's given. So all you have to do. And this is the way you also flow in the gift of the Spirit. Next week, we're going to talk about tongues. Then the we're going to talk about the gift of prophecy and the other gifts of the Spirit. It's going to be powerful. You know, I love the first service. You know, because <laughs> when I say, we'll receive. Someone say, ah, how will I receive? Will they touch me? That's the thing. You have all this mode in your mind that for me to tell you, it must be a certain way. So, how will this goes, I will lift up my hands like this. I will do like this. Then the pastor will touch me. Did you read Acts chapter 10? As Peter began to preach. Peter was just preaching. All of a sudden, a brother of mine just went, pull him, mama, mama. His sister went, paddle, mama, mama. Hey, paddle, no, 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 no. Hey, there was no even moment to say ministration. Holy Ghost took over himself. But some of you, as I'm speaking right now, maybe you feel it coming up. Even if someone that just receives beside you and he says, Thank you, Jesus. Part of all, you're mm, demon possessed. And, and because in your, in, your, in your mind, everybody that is extravagant with expression in church. Is that uncultured or demon possessed? What a poor way of thinking. Read Acts chapter 2. When they saw Peter and Paul, they said, This men are drunk. Question If because they spoke in tongues, that meant they were drunk. That doesn't make sense. If you had someone speaking another language, would you think he's drunk? No. They didn't only speak in tongues, the mannerism. As they spoke, they, they saw many, many, many was rolling on the floor. They said, Ah, hey, see, Hennessy has walk. They've just come back from Quinox. Yeah, ah, Koban has loaded them. No way. Peter said, These men are not as drunk as you suppose. They've just received the pouring of the Holy Spirit. What do you do? Believe you will receive it. As, see, I'm going to walk with the Holy Ghost. Once I say, take it! That moment, you're activated. You will just find that, that you will receive the ability and speak. So I say, what about if I don't understand what I'm saying? Do I understand what I'm saying? The nature of tongues is that human beings don't understand. We will talk about that next week. So it doesn't seem intelligent. Have you been to heaven before to know what's intelligent or not? He said, but I hear what others say. Ah, my brother, it's a gift too. You want to choose your own gift. So you speak. I never said the Holy Ghost to speak. I said, you what? Speak. What do you have to do? Surrender. I told you the reason why most people, especially men, the reason why most people don't speak in tongues is this. It demands a surrender of your physical senses. And most people just find it very difficult. Very difficult. And let me say something to you. The Holy Ghost is real to me. I, I lie to you not. Though I've never seen the Holy Ghost, He's more real than all of you here put together. I can tell 
is that real not only is this real is voice the holy ghost voice is more important to, to me than your voice because it's so real to me i'm telling you the truth I, I was coming to church this morning and there was a lady that's a single mom and the spirit of God told me the kids are going back to school told me a person said that i wanted to give her a millionaire and he told me that three days ago so as i was coming to church this morning he said to me you've not done that i said oh my god i'm sorry i was looking for my bone my phone to do a transfer i couldn't find it i said i will do it i'll do it as soon as i get my phone it's that real to me is that real how many of you have lost something because you don't know the reality of the holy ghost holy ghost will say go here you say why you say i something told me don't call the holy ghost something he's not something he's someone he's not just someone he's god and the thing is this the more you and if you miss that god what's that message the more you use the holy ghost the more you hear his voice it's real his presence listen as i'm speaking to you i sense his presence because it's like someone has a perfume you're used to you can tell oh we, we see it. There was a time I was in the one, it's in, this perfume, Million Dollar, when it came out. And Million Dollar has a very unique perfume, you know, smell. I don't know if you know that perfume. Very unique smell. You're like, oh, it's, oh did the Pacific come here just now? Because everybody can smell it. That's the presence of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, sometimes it feels, you know, I was accidentally in the first service. I said, why are you crying? He said, like, I don't even know why I'm crying. But I'm shaking within and without tears coming all over. Someone said, oh, it's because they're in a the physical space. What about those online that can't see you? And they're crying online as we speak. The presence of the Holy Ghost. Everybody lift up your hands and just thank him. Worship him. If you can speak in tongues, just go ahead. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Everybody pray. Thank you, Jesus. Let me kush this. Yes, will you sing the song? Yeah. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit. Spirit, you are Come here. Thank you, Lord. Come Will be speaking tongues. Many of you will spend a renewal, a renewal, a renewal. 
Let's pray, let's pray. Everybody pray. If you can pray in the spirit, let's go ahead and pray in the spirit. Pastor Hanson, get the microphone. Pastor Lee, get the microphone. Get the microphone. Get the microphone. Pastor John, get the microphone, yeah? Let's go ahead and pray the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. Let's pray the Holy Ghost. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, in Jesus' name we pray. Ladies and gentlemen, how many of you sense his presence? I want to pray some prayers. I want to pray for people that have not received the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues to speak in tongues. And the first thing is this. It's for those that are born again. So if you're not born again, that's the first step. And the second step is that when I, I'm going to do that first. So if you're here, you're not born again. If you don't mind, will you raise up your right hand? Please everybody put on your hands just for a minute. So that those that want to give their heart to Christ, or surrender the heart to Christ will receive. If you want to give your heart to Christ, raise up your right hands anywhere you are. Anywhere you are. Because you cannot receive this if you're not born again. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And I know that many of you have been abused when it comes to Holy Spirit kind of thing. Well, there's no abuse today. This is a genuine Holy Spirit. All of you raise up your hands. I wanted to mean the decision with your heart. And Pastor Sam, you need to help me with the card so that they can get, you know, yeah, you need to, I, I really want you to mean this with your heart. Say this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for what Jesus Christ did for me. When he died, he died for me. When he was buried, he was buried for me. For when he was raised from the dead, he was raised from the dead for me. Today, I receive him as my Lord and Savior. I believe in his work of death and resurrection. And I receive him today. I receive eternal life into my spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray the prayer, most likely an usher will come to you and give you a card. That's just the first step. But now you're born again and your vessel is ready for the Holy Spirit. The second thing is this. As we, I'm going to ask that the Holy Ghost will fill people. It's going to be very simple. His presence is already here. He wants to walk within and without. How will you receive? I want you to... Will you, will you please come? Let me tap my sister. What came on you? Because you just fell out in the power of the Holy Ghost. What came on you? As, because I've not even... As soon as we got up, you just fell out in the power of the Holy Spirit. What, what, what did you... I can't really explain it, but I was just overwhelmed. I... My whole body, I, I can't really explain it, honestly. I was just very overwhelmed. Wonderful. Thank you, my sister. And the reason I'm saying so is this. I just want to be familiar with the experiences so you don't resist it. So when I pray for you, the power of God will come upon you. Many of you have spoken in tongues before. You will feel a refreshing. Sometimes when the power of God comes upon you, it will be gentle. Some people, you will just be gentle. You just know that, oh, somebody is on me. Sometimes the power comes like a rushing mighty wind. It's very overwhelming. It's almost like it's going to knock you off your feet. And when it comes to you, you just yield to it. All you have to do today is what? The Holy Ghost is not looking for control. He's looking for what? Surrender. Hallelujah. And when we pray, once I said, take it at that moment, you will because I'm walking with the Holy Spirit. The supernatural ability to speak. It's not so the Holy Ghost will force your tongue. You will just feel the urge to say something. Go ahead and just release it. Either it makes sense, doesn't make sense. 
I'm going to need the help of our pastors at some point. I want them to be what a lot. Are you ready? Are you ready? Father, we worship you. Let's pray in the Holy Spirit one more time. Let's pray. Everybody, let's just pray in the Holy Spirit. Oh, shalala. Yes, let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Yeah, take the microphones and help me. Oh, la ba da 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 ba da da Yep, he's over there, but oh, yeah, man, oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah, thank you, Lord. Yes, 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 Spirit of God. Yes, Spirit of God. Now, all of you that are born again, you want to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Will you lift up your two hands anywhere you are? Lift up your two hands. And now, I, you know, I want our pastors can walk around and maybe stay beside them. Don't touch them yet. I will tell you when to do that. I will tell you when to do that. So, I mean, all of you on the stage can, you know, help me also. Just lift up your two hands. And listen to me. If you are born again, there's no reason why I will not give you, you won't receive the Holy Spirit. Don't minister to them yet until you hear my instruction to minister to them. Because we can touch everyone. So it's a, it's a touchless. All of you online, lift up the two hands. Are you ready? Once I pray, all you have to do is to believe that you'll receive. My question to you is that, will you receive the Holy Spirit now? Okay, just one person said so. Will you receive the Holy Spirit now? Listen, if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, this is not the time for you to pray. This is time for you to listen. Yeah. Will you receive the Holy Spirit now? Will you speak in tongues now? Or will it be tomorrow? Now. If you believe it's going to be now, it's going to be now for you. If you say, well, I'm not ready. You know, I'm not sure if I'll receive it. Then we're going to leave it there. Because it can be forced. It has to be received. Are you ready? If the your hands towards heaven. And heavenly father. And all of you that, listen, once I release it, I'm going to ask all of us to pray. Why? All of you that are speaking tongues already, I'm going to ask you to pray for a renewal that the Holy Ghost will take you over a fresh experience, a real experience. Are you ready? And Father, Father, oh yes, oh yes, yes, Father. And this is the moment for your people to receive the mighty gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And right now, from the back to the front, in the mighty name of Jesus, receive the Spirit of God. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. I said, be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's it. I said, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Help us, Shatana. I said, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hey, to help that lady over there. I said, be filled with the Holy Ghost. On the back in the middle, I say, in the name of Jesus, take it. I said, take it. Shalikita has taken now. Take it. Take it. Take it. Pastors, you can go ahead. Hey, mother, let's all pray the Holy Ghost. Let's all pray the Holy Ghost. If that people are falling around you, don't let it distract you. Let everybody pray the Holy Ghost. Everybody pray the Holy Ghost. Everybody pray the Holy Ghost. Don't get distracted. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Remove the chairs that help them here. Make Everybody pray in the Holy Ghost. Shalama tekele tu si atalama kuts le bruti sebata. Every giti kisha mantale mo kolo botana. Emba kolo boshama tele kuta. 
Everybody pray. If you have a feeling of the Holy Ghost, ask for a fresh and filling. Ask for a fresh and filling. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I want the pastors to move towards the back. All of you who receive the Holy Ghost, just lift up your hands. Some of you are speaking in tongues already. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Satanic Ibalata Maradaha. Yes, 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 feel me over, feel me over, feel me over, take over, take over, I surrender it all, if you will, go ahead, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, speak in tongues as the Spirit give you all trust. Speak in tongues as the spring give you all tricks. Help that lady, help that lady, help that lady. Help that lady, help that lady. Help that lady. Help that lady. Help her. Let him at all the brutals and the matter. Let go back on the post of the matter. Oh my God. Sabalaba take a decision. In Jesus' name. We'll literally have four more minutes to the close of this. Wow. The presence of the Lord is in this place. The presence of the Lord is in this place. The presence of the Lord is in this place. look at that people speaking in tongues for the first time those of you online don't be left out don't be distracted people speaking in tongues for the first time look at that power of the Holy Ghost thank you Jesus that's the lady that raised up a hand over there the, the lady with the black you know that lady with the I don't know with the hair and the you know yeah the lady yeah that one and the one behind her, yeah. The two of them. The one you're touching, this this one here. Yeah. Yeah. Come. Come and tell me what is happening to you. Oh, glory to God. There should be someone standing behind them. Ma'am, ma'am, I see your eyes are all soaked in tears. Tell me what is happening. No, I, I can hear you. I feel overwhelmed and I don't know. I was just crying. Feeling something cold in my body. Goosebumps all over me. That is the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Have you felt this before? For a long time now. For a long time. It's been a while. Do you speak in tongues? You do. But we're just like a new in film. The person I'm looking for, there's a lady with a black and a Okay, I think this is her actually. I just found it. Will you just touch my hands and let me ask him to feel you some more? Let's just ask him. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Will you just put it on here? That's fine. Um, tell me what is happening to you, my sister. I... I even see you shaking. I just... I'm just getting words settled and every weakness in me is busting forth and just words that a kind of confirmation of things I've been asking for just like a newness I, I cannot explain can I just hold your hands and pray and spirit of God thank you for what you would do <laughs> the ministry of the spirit of God the ministry of the spirit of God the ministry of the spirit of God right there how many of you found yourself speaking in tongues for the first time today? Raise up your hands. Let me see. Wow, look at that. You found yourself speaking in tongues for the first time today. Look at that. 
Look at that. Call this brother out. I don't know. I want him to let it go. Come. Today's the first time speaking in tongues. Just, just let us stay. Come, come. You need to hold him. Look at that. What is happening to you? Oh my God. This is the power of God. Someone said what is happening to him? Sometimes his presence overwhelms us. Someone says, what does this mean? Let me explain to you in a way you can understand. Have you been shocked by electricity before? When you're shocked, you remove your hand. That voltage was not high. When it's high, you get stuck. If you don't get stuck, you get thrown away. They are voltage in the spirits. Voltage in the spirits. Someone said, I, I, I turn to bring a man because someone will say, oh, these are just women. This is not women. I see a lot of guys like with their eyes wet. It's like all over. Voltage in the spirit. Someone says, I want to experience it. All you have to do is to say, Lord, I receive. That's all. And open up your mind to receive. Can I hold your hands? Can you can even hear me? I'm not sure. And Lord, we thank you for what you've started. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let your power flow mighty. Oh, my God. Never be the same again. Never be the same again. Just stay with him. Stay with him. Let me, everybody lift up your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Ma'am, what happened? I just surrendered and I've for 30 years of my life I had wanted to speak in tongues. For 30 years of your life you wanted to speak in tongues? Every member of my family does but I don't. I've tried, I've prayed. But what happened today? I just found myself talking. You just found yourself talking? Oh sister, the Lord is touching you some more. The power of the Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Ghost. Will you bring it forward here? Just bring it, bring it, bring it. Oh, come on, Come over here. Tell me what happened to you. Short of words. She said, I've been trying to speak in tongues for 30 years of my life. And today I got it. Nobody has to touch you. Sister, receive a fresh dose. <laughs> power of the Holy Ghost. Oh my God. I felt that jolt of power. Thank you, Lord. And we give you praise and glory. We honor you. And listen to me. All of you that are here and said, Oh, I have not spoken in tongues. Remember what I said. The spirit is where? Within you. All you have to do what? Surrender. How did I receive the Holy Ghost? All my friends, I received the Holy Ghost. It was just me. Four years. I remember that morning, people that laid in on me, I didn't receive the Holy Ghost. So I understand the frustrations. How you feel alone. And that morning, I was having my quiet time, 5.30 a.m. That's when I saw my quiet time, 5.30 a.m around 5 55 just about 6 a.m because i remember accurately i just found myself speaking in tongues i can never forget that day i, I remember the sport it was in my secondary school he was in chad house that's the house i was praying in and the annex by the right just imagine how precise it was i remember the position because when something like that happens in your life you remember so someone says, has he forgotten me? No, it's not about him again. It is given. All you have to do is what? Receive. Maybe right now you feel distracted. 
Maybe right now you feel that so many things are happening, I can't focus by yourself. You can go home and say, Lord, I receive this. And you will send a message and say, people are receiving online. Praise God. God bless you. You can have your sits.